attacking everyone around them who didn't have a starfish on their face. This included even some of the pro heroes that happened to still be here, such as Death Arms, who was currently smashing everything in sight as people ran from him as fast as they could. Henry Woods was both trying to destroy Death Arms with his branches. falling onto it with a plop, before sliding off. What the fuck? Yaba shouted in confusion and rage at the chaos in front of her. Wag! Kiba immediately started vomiting again, before passing out. Shit! Sorry first as she rushed to keep the sound. until it was looking right at them. Everyone's eyes widened with fear, as Starro winded back its right arm, and got ready to smash it into where Izuku and the others were hiding. Izuku was about to yell at everyone to get out when suddenly, someone grabbed Starro's massive arm, before it could launch forward. I don't think so, Patrick. MT Lady said, grabbing hold of Starro's arm, and flipping it over her shirt. Slam! Starro was slammed into the ground on its face, causing the arena to shake once again. Izuka breathed a sigh of relief. I'll have to give MT Lady a personal thank you once this is all over. MT Lady continued wailing on Starro, as the monster was on the of the starfish, to pull her down to the ground. Son of a bitch! Empty lady cried as she tried to pull herself up, only for Jirota Shishida from Plus B, also under Starro's control, to slam into her face and full beast form. Fuck! Shishida raised the ball, civilians to rest on them along the way. However, the moment they started to get close to an exit, all the exits were suddenly sealed shut by walls of cement, the work of a mind-controlled cementos. We need to help. Ken proclaimed immediately raising his own tracks, only for Izuka to grab his wrist. Absolutely not. Izuka told them, it's too dangerous out there. But the civilians are being ripped apart. Nara argued, pointing out sides at the crowds of people who were being attacked by mind-controlled heroes, students, and civilians. If we don't do something, people are going to die. Yes, but what happens if you go out there and get control? Izuku argued that. can't be taken over by it? He asked, getting everyone's attention. Samson just doesn't have a face, so it'd be impossible for her to be controlled. If Ken turns into heat blast, then his face would be on fire, so he couldn't be controlled. Netsu is also on fire. smashed open, and ninjas armed with swords rushed in. Immediately, Sori and Giza rushed them before they could even get close to the children. The two of them moved at overwhelming speed, hitting the ninjas in their vital points and knocking them unconscious. In less than a minute, they knocked out all 20 assailants. Is it the scout? I knew it. They were after us. I hear more on their way boss, Sori said. It would be best if we secured an escape route, Giza advised. While this place is safe from that starfish, it also leaves us trapped in a room, and we will eventually be overrun if we do not leave. 
damn it. This is just a Understood, sir. Giza responded. Ken, Netsu, Sansen, come with me. We're going to help deal with the chaos outside. Is it ordered? As he went to his other suitcase. Everyone else stay here. So sorry to keep anyone from the other side. Just might. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X. Kira didn't like whatever was happening here. First of all, someone woke her up, which already pissed her off. Then someone tried to her, and she sliced them to pieces with her vectors on instinct. So now she killed someone again. Great. Not to mention she couldn't see anything because the only source of light was the bits of sunlight peeking through closed blinds, and even those didn't do much to help the visibility because the entire room was covered in fear gas. Although it was strange, apparently this stuff was supposed to cause horrible hallucinations, yet she was just quite so Hallucination. Kira groaned. This is gonna suck, to say the least. Why is there another me? Who are you? What did you do to trick me? Mies asked her rapidly while backing away from her. Kira ignored her. After all, why should she pay any money for this hallucination? So she started to move her vectors around to dispel the gas, which also became the person. Once the sunlight was in, the gas started to dispel. Behind both of them were sliced up robots dressed in black ninja garb. Oh thank goodness they're robots. Kira breathed a sigh of relief as knees ran over to Fuku. Fuku, are you okay? Did they hurt you? It's okay they're gone now. Knees tried to reassure and comfort her crying friend, however, the girl didn't respond. Fuku, Fuku it's okay they're gone, you're okay. Fuku, it's okay, I got rid of them, Kira said, pretending to be the Fuku looked up at Kira with a shocked expression. Why you're not affected by my quirk? I held my breath before it came out. Kira lied. It would be hard to explain she had just no idea why Fuku's quirk was affecting her the way that it did. So I'm fine. Oh thank goodness. asked in distress. Neither of us can fight, and we can't open the door with no electricity. Kira had to resist the urge to roll her eyes. It's like she forgets how powerful our heart is. Fortunately, she already 
the bottom. Once they did, Kira immediately used her vectors to start running along the side of the house. Wait, Nis, where are we going? Fuku asked in a panic, frantically looking around to see if they were gonna be attacked. Somewhere we can find where Kira is found. The house isn't safe and without First, as she ran through the halls of the house to try and find any of the kids. Scree! Suddenly from around the corner, a swarm of robots rushed toward her. They were strange little things. About tall enough to reach past her ankle, and built similarly to velociraptors, but without the arms, and their entire head was just a big mouth. Both their teeth and claws were razor sharp, and deadly to most people if they got close. Fortunately, Sai didn't have to get close. She opened up a bunch of portals in front of her and unleashed hell, shooting off dozens of swords per second at the ravenous robots. The robots ran into her swords and were torn to shreds, but despite that, the horde didn't hesitate. The at them. And so even more of the robots were torn apart by her swords, but despite this, Sai was now stuck, in between two massive swarms of robots. Damn it, Sai swore. She could only hope that Fukushi was having better luck. nearby. Hold on Lady Airy. I'm coming. Tokoshi batted a few more robots out of the way and rushed toward the sound of Airy's voice. When he arrived, he found the door to the room had been smashed open, and inside were Airy, Kay, and the baby turtles, with a tiger man in front of them. Between them was a force field, seemingly being created by the fractal that Airy was holding. Smash! Smash! The tiger man smashed his fist into the barrier, making very small cracks with each hit. 